Houston, we have a problem. Over. Happy Halloween. Eight no, how does that feel? Feels great, baby. <laughs> Halloween right back at you. Thanks so much. Definitely. No problem. <laughs> right after that video cuts, he walks into somebody because he's awkwardly looking back at Aaron Andrews. Jimmy G had an efficient night on the field, made a lot of good decisions. Probably his worst decision in uh, post game, arguably hitting on an NHL hockey player's wife. Referring to a female sideline reporter as man is not a good look. Yeah. Baby is a worse look. It's probably worse than man. That's right. For sure. Uh, and, and by the way, I'd like to mention, shout out to Jared Stoll, um, Aaron Andrews' real husband. Wikipedia has it wrong after last night. Get your shit together, Wikipedia. Jared Stoll is an Adonis, bro. And a hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. We partied with him after the 2016-2017 uh, Patriots Super Bowl. Um, pa Patriots party was a little bit crowded, let's just say. Frustrating. So we dipped out to a hotel bar, ended up with, I think it was Joe Buck. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman. Aikman. Yep. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Aaron Andrews. Howie Long. Howie Long, making Gunter. We'll bleep out his name. I don't want to dox him. He's not just a producer, he is a talented real estate agent. Cameron Fr Fry, by the way. Ferris Bueller. Oh, yeah. Space I'm not, Cowboy. I'm not just a big Gordy Howe guy. I'm not saying I'm not a big Gordy Howe guy. Yeah, what do you have against him? Nothing. But Cameron Fry is the look here. We love hockey on this pod. We love Jared Stoll. Uh, also, this week, it, it wasn't just Halloween, which I could dress up for. This is the Halloween clearance podcast. Everybody did this shit yesterday. We're going to do it for maybe another week. I might dress up for a couple weeks. Um, I went to a Brooklyn Nets game this week. And I know what you're doing, Nets. You're trying to pry me away from the loving arms of the New York Knickerbockers, a team that I've been having a love affair with since I was nine years old. And I'm okay with it because things are bad at uh, MSG. And at the Barclays Center, beautiful, state of the art. They rolled out the red carpet on the heels of Hoops 2.0, which is the basketball chapter of my Waterboys initiative led by Malcolm Brogdon, the president. Joe Harris, Garrett Temple. Those guys, of course, were all together on the court as the Pacers took on the Nets. By the way, Kyrie Irving, you got to see him in person. This isn't a flex. Courtside, it's the best way to watch any professional sport, hands down. Even better than on the glass in a hockey game. I know that might be a hot take. Football front row might not be the play, but I'm with you on all the others. I don't like going to football games. Don't. People want to talk to me about football. It's all unhealthy food. Your boy's a healthy guy. But as I'm sitting there sizing up the celebrities in attendance, because in Brooklyn, that's the new hot place with KD arriving, Kyrie Irving, the beautiful facility. Brooklyn is kind of the up-and-coming place in New York. By the way, Brooklyn is it's beautiful. Um, I wasn't seeing like Knicks-type celebrities, but I looked right across me, and here's this ginormous dude caught my eye and yep it's justin tuck so i start texting him close-up pictures of uh, of himself sitting courtside and he he probably didn't appreciate that but he hit me back and laughed and he said uh i had no idea that was you you look like a hipster you look like you could live in brooklyn what are you 225 let's stop with the weight shaming tuck not everybody can stay jacked after football i'm doing the podcast thing now that demands my stamina, effort, and physical abilities. And you, what are you doing? You're going to Wharton? Well, to be fair, there was a jean jacket in play for you. Yeah, let's, 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 let's show that this is what we call Brooklyn drip on the left here. 
That's what the kids are calling that. Mm. That's an old navy jacket. Get the look. That's a t-shirt from Homage. Not homage, homage. Out of Cleveland, Ohio, I believe they are. Uh, those socks were bought at a department store. And those are common projects. The hat is Carhartt. Very few can pull that off. I'm not a hipster, though, but I do love Brooklyn. We had 140 sacks on the hardwood between me and uh, Tuck. And I'd say, I was safe to say I think that we were the most well-represented pass rushers as far as production on the hardwood that Thursday evening. It pried me away from baseball, but I really enjoyed it. As long as like Strahan or one of these really, really good rushers wasn't in the building, we were the top dogs. And it was cool to see Tuck. He was always cool to me when I was young. Good dude in all seriousness. Um, an absolute legend and somebody who treated me good. So shout out to Tuck. Uh, I had to ride home after that Thursday night game. Last night we did the show uh, at Amazon with Kay Adams and James Coe. I was Bum Phillips. This is me having two costumes. Can't get enough. This is Space Cowboy. And by the way, I, I inhaled some of those space vapors on the, uh, on the open and I am powering through. <laughs> I'm powering through this this intro to green light which i forgot to intro to this is green light and i'm your host chris long space cowboy this is macon uh we also have candy corn eater nate collins who are he we'll hear from in a bit college teammate professional football player uber driver in his spare time a renaissance man also likes candy corn and he likes joining us for the pot he also has a pot of his own that i will plug later um but last night five hour drive in a torrential downpour. You don't like to talk to your drivers, whether they're Uber drivers or otherwise. We can ask Wade and Nate to weigh in later. I, I don't prefer it. I like the, the swipe, quiet, please. Silence is an auto, five out of five stars. Auto? Yeah. You could probably crash into a light pole if you're quiet. Four out of five, yeah. Four out of five. My rating is 4.93. I'll probably ask Nate if that's actually good. But this wasn't an Uber, I actually got a driver, and my dude was pretty cool. Usually if a driver talks, I'm not happy. He had a cool accent, kind of a British accent. Mm. He did a business pitch a little bit. Not usually a fan of that, but it was a great idea. NDA, you know that whole deal, I can't talk about it. We crossed into Virginia state lines and he asked me, he goes, what's the deer situation in this state? Deer. Yeah, a lot of deer here. In case you didn't, didn't know, this is the mid-Atlantic Eastern Seaboard, United States, there's a lot of fucking deer out here. I don't know that you asking me is going to help you better prepare to drive the car. So, like, maybe I can't give you the analytics on that. Drive it straight. Try not to get us mortally wounded in conversation is, 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 the, is the play there. Baseball this week. Obviously, I was at a Nets game, had the TiVo, and get the coach's tape on the decisive Game 7 victory for the Nats. Shout out to Doolittle and Zimmerman. How cool was that? Wahoo wah. Wahoo wah. Two good dudes. Two good dudes. Two dudes who used to tear it up on Ellywood Avenue. Where 14th Street. 14th Street. Rugby Mac. Rugby Mac. Famously, Al Gro, my college coach, used to say nothing good happened uh, after midnight. And Nate pointed that out before the show. On Ellywood Avenue. Of course, what we did is we just went down to Mellow Mushroom four blocks down and we stayed till 3 a.m., University Avenue gets you out of the Ellie Wood mandate. Yes, we were out of the mandate. But these guys are going to tear up D.C. like it's Ellie Wood Avenue and like it's this guy. <laughs> Gyration. Stud. What do you think? that Was that a freestyle or butterfly? Yeah, yeah, butterfly. Yeah, graceful. Yeah, once he got the shirt off, even if it was just ninety nine percent, he was home free. Yeah, he was home free. He was going to be the star of the show. He was, he was ready for that thing, and DC's ready for that thing. They make me a little sick. They're a bunch of front runners. They have a hockey champion in the past couple of years. They have a baseball champion in the past couple of years. Mystics. Mystics. Can't forget the Mystics. I never would. No, you're a big Mystics guy. I know that about you. He can vouch. Uh, I actually got WNBA League Pass. Checking out the Mystics. Talking Mystics could be a segment. 
Talking baseball will be a segment next week with Wookie, my high school coach who you guys enjoyed. I got the feedback. You like him. First time on camera, he did pretty good. He's also in my fantasy football league. He knows that stuff. The last place winner or the, the last place loser mm -hmm. or winner, depending on who you are or what you like, has to get dyed tips. Like yep. Guy Fieri style. Macon's in the league. I'm middle of the pack right now. Yeah, you are one game out of last, and you're 10 points away from having the fewest in the league. But yeah, middle of the pack. Enough about my weaknesses. Let's talk about my strengths. Okay. That's the motto on this show. How, how would Coach Wookie do with tips? Wookie would not do good with tips. He is very bald. He's been bald since he taught me how to, or failed to teach me how to hit a curveball in high school. You got a picture of what he sent me. This is the rendering of what he'd have to do to his face. That is his beard dyed jet black. I could see him going that direction and keeping that look in perpetuity. I would love that. He looks like <laughs> he looks like some sort of lawyer, Wookie and Wookie, <laughs> with yeah. a fucked up beard. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get him next week. We'll break down all the action. Do little Zimmerman winning on the road. They say that's big. We'll talk about how pitching played it. Pitching was big in the World Series, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good analysis by you. That's what I'm here for. Fantasy football, though, Kenyon Drake shipped to the desert, helping your boy out, out to a really uh, good start this week, to say the least. I looked up 10-plus points in the first quarter, already paying dividends. I knew I stashed him for a reason. Yeah. GM, GM of the year? Team Long. Creative have name, any, man. Have Creative any, as hell. Have any rename my team. Had Goskowski on IR sitting there as my kicker for weeks. Making is kind enough to text me before Thursday night games. Hey, fix your lineup, bro. Hey, died tips, boy, is what he calls me. Uh, we will get to real football, though, and the, the Kenyon Drake impact in Arizona, the Cliff Kingsbury impact. Um, definitely an improved team. A little spoiler alert from my man Dave Damashek. A.K.A. Nostris Damashek. Mm. Yeah, look at him. Calling shit. And Dave does a great job. He's great on uniforms. He's great on actual football analysis. Love to have you on, Dave, sometime to talk about uniforms. You know, we both go back and forth on that. Macon's also a big uniform guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very snobby uniform guys here. By the way, the Niners uniforms last week remind me of my old NFC West watching days. Uh, I was a Carolina Panthers fan growing up, as you know. Um, shout out to Uptown Cabaret, <laughs> a little gentleman's club I snuck into before the Continental Tire Bowl circa 2002, underage, ran into a teacher. Charlotte is a great city, the Queen City. Love the Panthers. And I used to love watching the Panthers play the Niners. Those unis against the Panthers and Niners brought me back. That was when they had the Saints and the Falcons in the NFC West. How fucking weird is that? But the Niners are 8-0. First time since 1990. Uh, 2013 was the last time they beat Arizona in the desert. They come to this game number one in defense, leapfrogging New England, number three in rush yards per carry. Um, not last night. They were a little bit shaky on defense for the first time this year. Uh, gave up 23 points the last four games of the season. Last night, of course, they gave up 25 and 3.3 yards per carry, definitely substandard for them. Loaded box. That's That was the play. Make Jimmy G beat us. And we've talked about this a lot. I talked about it last night on the show. It's not that I don't believe in Jimmy G. I've seen him do it in 2016 in New England in spot start situations with Tom Brady out, suspended, won us a big game in the desert, also lit up the Dolphins before his shoulder exploded. Um, but... It's just that we hadn't seen him do it in San Francisco yet. And I'm not discounting him. I think he's going to have to do more of that. There are going to be games where it's out of phase like that. And he was great. They actually threw the ball more than they ran the ball for the first time last night uh, on the season, 37 to 31. He was 28 of 37, four touchdowns, 136 rating. I think that's good. I'm not an analytics guy, but that's good. Um, Third down is where he made his money, 12 of 14, 159, three touchdowns, and he's 16 and two as a starter. No wonder he was feeling like he could take a shot after the game, although that's not advisable. NFC West is back, like it's 2012 all of a sudden. Pretty cool seeing Richard Sherman post a picture today of, uh, of him lined up, 
manned up on uh, on on Fitzgerald. Two guys who I really respect, seeing them still play at a high level from my NFC West days. It's like it's 2012 again. Top to bottom, best division in football. Obviously, Niners on top and uh, and everybody else behind them. But even the bottom dwellers have improved. The matchup I can't wait to see is the Niners and Saints. I don't know how it go. I still think the Saints are the best team in the NFC. I also think, for what it's worth, if you're a Niners fan watching this, I'm not shitting on your team. That's where we are now. If they're number two, all of a sudden I'm sliding them. I think they match up very well against the Pats. The team they have to beat, though, is the Saints. It's going to be a great matchup whenever they play. O-line and D-line, arguably the best units, respectively, offensively and defensively up front for those two teams. Week 14. Week 14. San going Francisco to be a is in New Orleans. Barn burner. Tough place to win. And that's why home field advantage makes a big difference for the Saints. And we'll get to how they weathered that Drew Brees storm in a bit. But Garoppolo looked different. Again, that big throw to Pettis, the pump off schedule, he looked different last night. So he had an opportunity to win one. Got to give him his props. He did it. Sanders trade gives him a number one receiver. They got a number one tight end who had an injury scare last night. I would keep an eye on the Quan Alexander injury as well. But the Niners are real. So, superlatives. We are halfway through. We got to do that superlative thing where we uh, we do the yearbook thing, most likely to, least likely to, all that shit. Uh, I want to start with Coach of the Year. Do you have a favorite Coach of the Year? Mm, you go. Frank Reich. I know people call me a homer, but we barely used to ever talk in the hallway in Philly. I know players love him. Players have to love him to overcome that impromptu August retirement by Andrew Luck came out of nowhere shocked everybody including guys in the building when I talked to guys in that locker room in the wake of that they didn't know and they were surprised um, but you essentially have a backup head coach a backup quarterback and you know Bill could win this thing any year the way he's morphed the Patriots into 15 different teams is really impressive over his tenure and we've talked about that before but Frank Reich I got to give him the nod he's missed in Philly You've seen what the offense has done since that. And he's injected a lot of life into this Colts team and given them hope. You know, he's doing all the things that coaches do when they put their fingerprint on a team positively. They're good in two minute, haven't given up points at the end of games this year in two minute. They haven't given up 100 yard rusher in quite a while. Games in 20 now, I think it's like 26 games. Um, they've been money in the red zone. And more than anything, Jacoby Brissett, who a lot of people thought of as a backup, is winning games when he has to. And Frank gives him the ability to know the difference between when he needs to win games and when he needs to manage them. He's, he's thrown more touchdown passes inside the five than anybody in the league. Red zone is huge. They're top five in red zone. That's coaching. That's Jacoby. And when he beat the Texans, they didn't have a single first down through the or, uh, on the ground, which goes to show you, even with Marlon Mack, he can put the team on his back and win games. Really happy for Jacoby. He's got a 1.32 percentage of INTs, and that is the lowest rate in NFL history through the first 30 games. Guy's awesome. That leads me into my traditional MVP. Do you have one? Well, Coach of the Year, Matt LaFleur, 7-1, and one, coming in, Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Whose team is it? Came in the beast. They've navigated that. Yeah. Only a touchdown loss to Philly so far in the on the season. And we'll get to Green Bay in a minute. And that's interesting you say that. I, I am I like that. I do. Uh, but I am uh, I have some reservations about Green Bay. We can get to that. But he's he's had a tall order in coming in and managing the most talented quarterback in the league who has had it out with coaches before. My MVP for traditional like quarterback type is Russell Wilson. Coming in the year. I hammered the over on eight and a half wins for them. Really happy I did. I thought it'd be more of a struggle. I don't want to jinx it. Probably already did. Sorry, Russ. 17 touchdowns, one interception. He's absurd. I know he's playing in Vancouver, so people forget about him. But he has seen the fall of the Legion of Boom. They shipped all their players out on defense. They basically blew it up. But he's been able to, through all the wide receiver turnover, through all the personnel turnover, through the bad offensive lines they've had, be perpetually awesome up there in Seattle and a lot of fun to watch. So hats off to Russ. He's my MVP. Yeah. You? I'll stay in Wisconsin. Aaron Rodgers, 12, still doing it. I know you're going to get to him. Yeah. 
Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is Dalvin Cook. I'll get to because the next one is hidden MVP. Okay. And for hidden MVP, I mean, there's names you could float like Cook, obviously, because if he's not going, Minnesota's not going, and they have a legitimate chance to represent themselves in Miami at the end of the year. I know it sounds crazy, and I'm riding the wave with them, but Dalvin is the key there. Uh, Nelson, Quentin Nelson, who's been huge in Indy. Um, there's a number of players I could have talked about here, but I think Gilmore in New England. The domino effect of having him there, he's like the new Revis, right? And Bill doesn't pay guys, but he knew exactly what he was doing when he paid him. And everybody's like scratching their head like, he was a good player in Buffalo, now he's great. And he's the best corner in the league. That's kind of unanimous right now. 36 passer rating against, 44 uh, completion, 44 percentage. Uh, throwing, what, how do you say that? 44 completion rate percentage? What the fuck? It's only a podcast. It's only a podcast. It. So 44 out of 100 times that they throw the ball at Gilmore, they actually catch it. There you go. <laughs> Three INTs, zero touchdowns at him. And in Buffalo, he wasn't really manned up a lot. He wouldn't travel with number one. Uh, more is expected of him in New England. He allows them to blitz at the click they do. And that has allowed them to feast on rookie and young quarterbacks throughout the first half of the year. It's scary the rate they blitz at. And they do it with confidence because you can throw away the key on one half of the field. DPOY, this is a tougher one. I want to say Bosa, but I also want to pump the brakes. We talked about the coverage in uh, San Francisco a lot. The trend continues. Last night, their sacks were longer longer clock sacks. And by that, I mean coming into last Sunday, one out of 20 sacks were under three seconds. And then the big showdown against the Panthers, they had seven sacks. I think the quickest one was 3.85 seconds. The average was like 4.85. Uh, there were a bunch of north of five. I want to throw Miles Garrett in there. He's got double digits already. Waterboy's captain on a bad team. It's really hard rushing on bad teams. Your boy knows that. He does it beautifully. One of only two guys with double digit sacks, Shaq Barrett being the other. Yep. We love Shaq Barrett, friend of the program, because he probably would like it if he saw how good we talk about him. Um, there we go again with the friend of the program thing. Jamie Collins, I can safely say is a friend of the program. Used to line up with him, love him. When he went to Cleveland, I thought he might be back. He saw how it was there. He's back in New England. Six sacks. He's their best coverage guy, best coverage linebacker in the league, their best playmaker. And he does this thing a lot, mm. which I can't do as well. But I love it when he's just like, you know? Yeah. He's got swag. New England could always use some swag. I love Jamie Collins. He might be my dark horse for defense player of the year. Comeback player. That's Jimmy G. I mean, not only is he coming off an injury, a major injury, he's been really counted out. So kind of disrespected a little bit. Biggest surprise? Do you have one here? I'm going to go Cliff Kingsbury. You got to give me something in this fucking thing. Do you have an opinion on any of these superlatives? Yeah, let me look at something here. Talk to me about Cliff. <laughs> Cliff was much maligned coming in. I mean, I know he he had that boy wonder look, and people are getting real tired of that shit. The uh, the young guys getting jobs when guys have been working away for years, but he's been a great play caller as advertised. He's gotten car the cards competitive a lot quicker than I thought he would. Some decision making last night was kind of questionable on the challenge and the icing, the defense, timeout. But I am surprised about that. Okay. Okay. If I'm looking at standings, yeah, and before the year you have Matt Ryan, Devontae Freeman, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Dan Quinn, Keanu Neal, obviously a huge loss, but Falcons at one and seven. That could be biggest letdown. That surprises me. But we have a letdown thing. Hit me. Biggest letdown Atlanta? Yeah. I think so, and it's been amazing that he's still lost that many games. You might be swaying me here. I was going to say Cleveland. Well, but I also knew that Cleveland I, – I was buying Cleveland more because I think the AFC North wasn't that good. I didn't foresee it going this way. But Atlanta, yeah, playmakers at three levels of defense. Jarrett, um, the backer they got back, um, Deion Jones. I'm not completely listening to you, so just keep it rolling. And Neil, uh, who obviously is hurt in the third level. But you mentioned the weapons they have offensively. Matt Ryan's been really good all year. Big letdown. Um, Browns, I'd, I'd throw in there as well. Browns this week at Broncos. 
Huge. Yeah. That could get them to three and five. They have two more against the Bengals, two more against the Steelers. We don't know what they will look like. That's a great call. Dolphins on the schedule. They could climb back into it. They could climb back into it, and there's only one way to go, and that's up because it's been a, a rough start for them. And I got to say, they got to be one of the best offenses of all time, right? They scored 17 points or whatever it was. Maybe it was a 21 against the Patriots because they're the best defense of all time. 13. Felt like 21 when you're doing that to the best defense. You're glad it wasn't 20 or, or yeah. 21. Mm-hmm. I was glad because I had the under in that game. Shout out to uh, to the Pats defensive rotation guys. I will send you. What do you like? What do you still send? Edible arrangements to people? Candy? Almond Joy. Almond Joy. Thank you for looking out for your boy. Um, best free agent signing. I'm gonna go with Ingram. Mm. I've always been a big Ingram fan. Super underrated. He was a big part of that Saints thing, and I was worried they weren't going to be able to recover from losing him. He was their closer. In the second half, he'd get the ball. Teams are tired. The pace is different from Kamara, um, and he'd wear you down. And he's in Baltimore now in that Greg Roman system that was great in my heyday in the NFC West with Frank Gore in that big O-line mobile quarterback greg roman's been awesome ingram even talked about how many looks they get into to get to so many different runs it can be really confusing for defenses and helps him be productive i like ingram what say you i do too he's a big tuna you might or might not be aware of that it's our fantasy football league which i think you've checked once or twice so far (laughs) this year uh nick chubb ran for 131 on the pats what does ingram do against the pats this week oh if they're committed to it i think he has a good day But Nate made a good point, Candy Cornate, who you talked to in a bit. He said Belichick's game plan could look totally different than what would be optimum for them. And I I, I might agree because he plans on seeing them probably again. It's chestnut checkers with him, big picture. I don't know how they game plan him. I worry about, and we'll get to it later in the previews, uh, New England in man coverage. College player I'd like to see in the pros. This is something that's right up your alley. Why don't you start? Do you have any? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Hassis Dubois. Yeah. Shout out to our boy, number eight, who's mossed people up and down the field this year for the Hoos. And somebody who absolutely will be, 34, Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall. Get well soon. Get well soon. Um, You can go non-Virginia. Okay, I'll go non-Virginia. Chase Young, right? That's the kid in, uh, in, in Columbus who has been wrecking shop. These pass rushers getting so talented. I'm glad I was born in 85. Um, and I love CD Lamb. You like CD? Yeah. You see these nuts in your mouth? <laughs> Oof. Gosh, I hope that gets cut. <laughs> I look forward to watching this episode <laughs> and seeing if that is in there. I love CD Lamb. I have been on the hype trade for two years now. This guy is going to be fucking generational. He reminds me of a bunch of receivers I liked rolled into one. He doesn't play like a receiver. I like that about him. Play of the year, I'm going to go Rodgers throwing to the corner of the end zone about a week ago. And a lot of people would contend he didn't know where he was throwing it. I, I think he did. Where? Yes. And to whom? To whom? Well, there's only one guy going to the corner of the end zone. He had Jimmy Graham in the vicinity. But Jimmy, and then I think he had... if he wanted to throw it to Jimmy, he wouldn't have put so much loft on it. Okay. Quarterback special. That's my quarterback you're talking about. So, hey. That's your quarterback in fantasy? Yeah. Nobody cares about our fantasy team. Nobody cares about our fantasy team. Sell high, buy low. Sell high on topic. I'm selling the Packers to win games in November and December. You have to be better up front in the run. And I think they've won a lot of games with questionable calls. Listen, there's nobody I love watching more than Aaron Rodgers, and he will drive this thing, but I'm selling high. Buffalo Bills, 5-2. and two. Arguably hard to sell them high because they're living off of a close loss. That's it for Buffalo. And no disrespect to them, they're not quite a complete team yet. Who are you buying low? Buying low, I'm going to buy the Cowboys low-ish. I've been on the Cowboys hype train as far as them being a really good football team this year, making a run again. The new uh, new coordinator did a good job out of the gate. We stumbled. We started to look like Garrett was calling the plays again. Now they've improved in a lot of categories offensively. I like them late to make a run. Yeah. I know they're coming off two wins, but they're also third in their division, L.A. Rams. Yeah. I I would also buy them very low. Absolutely. 
and their defense is getting better. Uh, as for trades, we got to talk about that for a second. We'll bake it in the superlatives. Best and worst trades, best trades. I like this model of value trades uh, for mid-round picks for veterans like Marcus Peters, who can take uh, that Baltimore defense to the next level. They've been scoring prolifically in Baltimore. He already has a pick six there. By the way, Ramsey gets shipped to L.A., forces a fumble the first day. Those guys are turnover machines. Uh, he's got two pick sixes on the year. The record's four. He could see that in Baltimore. Oh. The worst trades for me, though, were the ones that didn't happen. I thought Philly could have gone and gotten uh, any number of things. You know, they, they, they need somebody inside to help Fletch out. They could use some edge rush. Um, I know they went and got the kid from the Browns, but that feels like more of a project. I think they should have got a Robbie Anderson. I'm worried about Deshaun's health the rest of the year. I don't know. That offense has missed that speed. They quickly became a slower offense from 17. I think we have recency bias when we look at the Eagles and that Super Bowl run. The offense is a lot different this year, and they could use that that force that can take the top off the defense. Torrey Smith was one. Deshaun, obviously his health. Um, could have gotten a corner, and Chris Harris didn't do it. I would have loved to see Trent Williams freed. Um, that's a bad situation there. A.J. Green, anywhere. My man is rotting in, in uh, Cincinnati. I feel for him. Um, and Aqib Tlaib, is he retiring? Is that what he said? Miami, right? Yeah, I mean, he... I, Synonymous? I, th <laughs> I think he really might retire. Uh, that is a tough blow. He might be the unhappiest camper of that trade sequence. Uh, and then there's the Jamal Adams deal, which I think there's more to than what we're hearing. But we can get into that at another time. Did you say Philly could use an edge rusher? It could, but not one to just hit his pen in an astronaut suit. Got you. Although I know I can go get buckets right now. Got you. Let's do the fun stuff. How about that? Let's do it. Okay. So we're not going to do a big college fun thing this week. Uh, I, generally, my kid is relegated to going to a mid-major there's going to be no Stanford, no UVA at this point until Pops learns to how to gamble a little bit better. Last week, though, I had a money line that hit Green Bay Packers, Kansas City Chiefs. One of a lot. There we go. Bow, bow, bow. We need that Jeopardy thing that we do audio-wise when we do the money line. I got Stanford Steve with me. Steve, how was uh, – you had a cold brew. Was, was Halloween a rager for you? Uh, we actually worked, Chris. Uh, took the kids out earlier. Uh, we were able to get that done, and then Scott had to work. So, of course, uh, he never gets a night off. So we were uh, we were out there grinding late, I real know. late. But I, um, I saw you. I love some fun. I, I love the costumes, man. You're co the what are you coneheads? Huh. <laughs> 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 Look at you. You've been waiting on that one. No, it like actually came days. to me. It came. To, I mean, it, listen, hey. I'm the gangster of love, and you are supporting the troops today, yeah, one one upping us. Uh, huh? You're one upping us. I, we, we always. We're not. We're not. I want to be patriotic here, so yeah. we'll get to uh, we'll get to the picks. We'll get to your favorite three picks on the college football slate. Last week, neither of us did very well. We're sub okay. 500 off the bat. By the way, we should probably settle on what the bet is here. Yeah. Well, first off, you did. I thought we were just giving advice, and then the people were going to be able to take it for what they want. Yeah. Well, the people can take it for what they want, but I also want to compete against. What are you scared? I'm so shitty at gambling. You're all of a sudden you're you're not feeling so froggy. <laughs> no. Let's come on. Come on. Competition. Ten, fine ten, us up. What do you think? Ten minutes at an open mic club doing stand up comedy, and we got to go. If you if you lose, oh, you got to do the comedy. Man. I'll come. Yeah, Macon likes it. Somebody suggested that on Twitter. Yeah, that's good. That's so. Uh, that's what we came up. What? Give me one other suggestion, or we didn't get any. tattoo of each other's faces, <laughs> like a Pep Boy style logo no. style. No. Too Ten determined. minutes. Oh man. Ten minutes isn't that bad. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Okay, five. five minutes in an open mic club of our choice of, not not we'll we'll, we'll mutually agree upon it. I'm not gonna put you out there at the Apollo or some shit, and you get booed off stage. Is that yeah. a comedy yeah, club? Yeah, I'm not. This has to be. <laughs> so the loser, and we can start the tally today, mm -hmm. or we can start it last week. Has to go open mic club, and I will be there to support you when I upset you at year's end. Why don't you lead off with your college All right, football? All right, well, that's what you have producers for, so they can make that decision. Okay. 
Go ahead. All right. You got your favorite pick Saturday? Yes, I do. I have three college football picks. We're going to go with the over and then the Nebraska-Colorado game. Both teams are getting their best players on offense back. Quarterback Adrian Martinez for Nebraska. Rondale Moore for Purdue. Uh, people can say what they ever want about these two head coaches. I love these two guys. They'll have their offenses ready. I like that one. I like Liberty UMass to go over 69 and a half. <laughs> it's only because of UMass. Listen to this. UMass is giving up 50 a game, over 550 yards per game. They've given up 56 to UConn, 69 to La Tech, 66 to Coastal Carolina, 52 to Charlotte, 45 to Southern Illinois, the Salukis. They're not even Division I. So uh, we're going to think Liberty gets off the deck and scores a lot. UMass could score a little bit, so we're going to go over the total 69 and a half with Liberty and UMass. Nice. And well, then so, so, in so, Miami. So there's, a lo- there's a lot of 69s there for the Minutemen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Maybe they like them. They have to like them. They don't have a choice. Uh, next up. <laughs> uh, Miami, Florida State. Um the under is coming 12 of the last 14 uh, with these when Miami's on the road. And un- the under in the last five has come in in, in Florida State's last five games. Um, Hornerbrook's going to start for Florida State. They're a little better offensively, but I think that gives Miami more of a stationary target, you know, with that spread offense. The underdog in this game is 11-3 and three in the last 14 times they've met. So Miami's the underdog here. I'm going to take the Canes. It was plus three and a half this week. Whatever it is, I like the Canes plus the points here, even though the game's in Tallahassee. What say you make? Is that compelling? Uh, quick analysis. Miami is not good. <laughs> um, I've seen them in person. Neither is Florida State. That's fair. That's I've very seen them fair. both in person. About, and I, I have some hurt okay. feelings because they took down our club yeah. in Miami Gardens, Florida. Miami Gardens is a wonderful place. I, uh, under. I'm, I'm, I'm with Steve. Under, under, under. I want to give you my three. I, I, I like, for, <laughs> right off the bat, I like Kansas getting six points. I am a big fan of Les Miles, and he's must-see TV. You they, love him. They played Texas really tough. I actually got that one right. Um, Puka. Puka. That's my middle name. Puka Williams, good player. Yes, he is. Uh, so I like Kansas um, getting six. I also like UVA and the money line. The odds are, uh, what is it, plus 110? Yeah. You know, like, let's just go win the thing, right? Don't need the two points. For once. Oldest. That's the worst team to watch ever. Stop oh, it. Golly. Can we just, can we cut this or just pull the fucking cord with all these? We got all these machines back here. Is there one that we just pull it? Um, I like Virginia and the money line. It's the oldest rivalry in the South, and I'm riding with my boys in Chapel Hill. I also like Oregon getting four points, or giving four points, actually. Mm. Macon, Macon is my Pac-12 specialist, not to hedge my bets and pawn this off on him. It'll probably be the only one I get right, Make. Yeah, Ducks, four. That's that's nice. I've seen four and a half. Yeah. Hope it doesn't creep. Yeah, no need. How many stadiums has Macon been to in the Pac-12? Ooh, here we go. Autzen, Rose Bowl, Coliseum. That'll do it. Three. Never been to Stanford. Right. He wasn't one of the 17 people at Stanford Northwestern <laughs> earlier this season. <laughs> Let's get to the guys that get paid for their likeness and more in the NFL. Uh, mm. Yeah. Let's see a cut of this gambling juice. I, I, I've got some Jets-Dolphins numbers that I have to tell you. Let's talk about it. Um, first off, we know the Dolphins story, obviously. They're, cu- they're scoring 11 points a game. The Dolphins have <laughs> one run of 19 yards or more. They have one completion over 35 yards. It's been 50 years since two teams have met this late, which is week eight, with such a bad combined record, which is one win. Um, I like the under. I, I just This is a bad spot for the Jets. I was on them last week. I thought they would cover the seven and a half with Jacksonville, but um, I can't wait to watch this game because I still think Miami's playing hard, which they is are. awesome. They are. Uh, but the Jet, all the pressures, all the pressures on the Jets, man, all of it, and and you can imagine what the two weeks has been 
you know, since Sam did the, you know, the, uh, you know, the ghost comment, uh, there's, they got to be feeling a lot of stuff down there in Miami after that effort against Mo the Steelers Monday night. I just think the under is the way to go in this game because it's going to be a struggle to score points. It is. Uh, I'm going to also take the Packers on the money line. What's yeah, that? My, my, my people in Cape Canaveral love the under. I mean, they've watched a lot of Dolphins uh, games. Okay. Yeah, at, uh, at the NASA headquarters. You got people everywhere. Yeah, we got friends. Where of the don't you have people? We got friends of the program. We have people. We don't have any people in the state of Maryland. We don't. We don't do Maryland. <laughs> Sorry to Scott. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your next pick, bro? <laughs> uh, I wasn't gonna bring up uh, Packers <laughs> money line. It's gonna be a home game out in Los Angeles at that soccer stadium that the Chargers play in. So uh, I'm gonna take the Packers there in the money line. And then Monday night, I like the Giants getting seven and a half. As long as you're getting more than a touchdown, that just feels stinky. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what we know what Prescott and um, Zeke did to them week one and just chewed them up. But the Giants have like a totally different team, it feels like, since week one. And I think they could score uh, a lot better than they did with Eli at the helm, even though they went up 7 uh to start the season against Dallas. So I'm going to take the Giants plus the points there. I just feel, it just feels like a weird line. It doesn't oh. make sense to me. Mate, you're the Giants in-house specialist. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, go G men, Steve. Why is that? Why is that Green Bay line only three? Because it's going to be a home game. But why is it or, only? I mean, three? Yeah, but, but why is it only three? The road. It breaks the rule. The axiom of in gambling insiders know this: you get three points at home, right? Is it three? It's three, but they're yeah, you know, they're playing away from home. I know, so that's what I'm saying. It should be six because it's effectively a home game for them. I'm saying it should be higher too. That's why it feels like a stay away. I think Steve gave us money line. He's not talking okay. about the number. He's not talking about the spread. It just feels a little yep. weird. So that so happens to be um, that so happens to be one of my picks. I'm actually buying a half point because it stinks. Oh. It stinks like, and I think it's plus uh, what is it? One thirty um, or minus one thirty um, for okay. For them to get the for, for for me to buy the half point, I'm really nervous about it being tight. Even though it is going to be like a home game for Green Bay. I mean, we saw what the terrible towels did the other day. Wait till you see a bunch of Midwesterners yeah. descending on Los Angeles and Orange County with cheese heads. It's going to be an interesting cultural clash. Um, and I think the big question mark is LA's play calling this week. I don't know. I haven't heard who it's going to be yet with Wizen Hunt fired. It could be a ball control game, or it could be up tempo, depending on who's calling it. But I'm still—I already actually laid uh, a, a good amount of ducats, if you will, on the old uh, okay. pack. So I like them. I also like Colts minus one uh, at Pittsburgh. That's I, what's you going on. You love the Colts. What's no going? one loves the Colts more than you. That's I love crazy. The, I love the Colts. Quentin Nelson, Frank Reich, T. Y. Hilton. Dallas Clark years ago. And can you name another Colt? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Peyton Manning. Yeah, he Quarterback. was quarterback. He was good. I remember him. Uh, also, I like the Titans Panthers over uh, at 42. I think the Titans will crack a hole in that wow. defense. Over? Right up. Yeah, I'm just telling you, right up the middle. This could be the one they run back and say, you fucking moron. But I think the Titans dent. The Panthers right up the middle. The Panthers really struggle with teams that run the ball up the middle. I talked about this before. you got to bring a safety down, and they get beat deep. Um, and they gave up 52 points to the Niners with that same formula. I think Derrick Henry gets loose. I think it's chaotic, maybe some turnovers, and leading to points. Uh, I like the over. Okay. Yeah, which is unpopular. That's the picks, right? What does Cameron think, what does Cameron think of those picks? Uh, all mostly Poor. I need to hit Steve with one more college game. A week ago, okay. Michigan Wolverines 45. Yeah, let's talk about that. Notre Dame Fighting Irish 14. This week, they have the Hokies yep. come into town. Everyone's favorite division, the ACC Coastal. The Golden Domers are laying 17 and a half. Do you have a sense for that particular spread? Uh, it's a it's a tough spot for Notre Dame. It, you know what's amazing to me is how like the the name this year is Urban Meyer. So like Urban Meyer to USC at the beginning of the year, then USC wins a couple games, and now Notre Dame loses one game and gets crushed. It's like all right, buy out Brian Kelly and, and hire Urban Meyer, bring him back to Notre Dame. 
Um, it's just funny to me the Notre Dame uh, talking points every point every week. It's fascinating. Um, I, I you got to take the points, right? I mean, I know we don't like to talk well about the Hokies on this podcast or this show or whatever it is. Yeah, I still they're don't know not what not it is. friends of the program. Uh, video show. Not not yeah. friend, not friends of the but, program. I mean, One of the few. They've won three in a row. Yeah. They're they've won three in a row. Um, you know, they everybody gets. I know you guys. I'm I, I played there when I was playing in college like it's the worst it's the worst surface now they have field turf but like it's the most overrated stadium in college sports like it's not a good atmosphere and like you just want to go there and beat them and just shut all their fans up it's 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 just it's notre dame you know so i think virginia tech goes in with a little motivation I, i would take the points if i had to take this game I hate to say I think that's the right side. You know. I was just there a few weeks ago, surprised by how quiet it was. Um, I will say, though, the yep. concourse pristine, is from what beautiful. I hear. Beautiful. Beautiful. The bathrooms. Yeah. I would take a nap in those bathrooms. Just, I like, mean, just like at a church. Yeah. Once you step inside the stadium, <laughs> run of the mill. Yeah. Yeah, the atmosphere and the field turf, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, it only, it only took them 150 years to renovate the place. Yeah, well, you know, the church doesn't have any money. So, um, anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> where were we? Yeah, I got a Breeders' Cup pick. You want a Breeders' Cup pick? Yeah, let's do some ponies, man. And, and, and when we look back at this, my son will absolutely disown me. If it's football, that's one thing. But if I'm betting ponies, yeah, go ahead. You Take already Yoshida in the Breeders' Cup. Just okay. one, just one horse. Yoshida in the Breeders' Cup. Yoshida. Okay. Yoshida. Yoshida. And last yeah. week, kind right. of, kind of, kind of an ulterior motive here. I'll just admit I had you on the show because you're awesome and people love you. But I also have you on the show to actually give me advice uh, from which I can profit financially. South Carolina. Uh, yep. Last week, not no bueno, and then you know Notre Dame. Yeah, I, I'm a little. I mean, I just uh, you. Are we just gonna bring up all my losses? Or no, my up your losses. My losses were terrible. I mean, all week was terrible. <laughs> Even in the NFL, I mean, the entire segment is predicated on my losses. Enough about my weaknesses. Let's talk about my strengths. Okay. I, I, I do I do over unders well in the NFL. That's my specialty. I'm a money line specialist. I don't do it all well, Steve. I mean Steve, thank you for joining us, man. I'm glad you recovered from that uh from that alumni weekend. We're here, buddy. Hey yeah. what is that drink? Is that a Didn't frappe- miss a flight or anything? Frappuccino. No, it's a cold brew. Cold brew. I miss that from from Jump Street. That's a callback now. He's had the cold brew. Yep, he has had the Trying cold Trying to run a professional brew. operation here, Steve. If you could hold off on the beverages next time, that would be appreciated. <laughs> Yo, Steve. Sorry. St- Sorry. Hey, Steve, in all sincerity, thank you, brother. Thanks for being here. Yeah. We'll, we'll hopefully see you next week. We can talk off, off air, but open mic night sounds okay? Five minutes? I... I, yeah, I didn't really have a choice in this one. This is well, going to be bad. Why but, don't we? Uh, yeah. Why don't we pitch it back to the fans? We'll pitch it back to the fans. We'll punt a week. All right, one more week. One, one more week. week. We didn't get enough entries. Thank you for joining us, Steve. We'll talk to you next week, brother. All right, are those king size pillows or queen size pillows in your legs? On my legs? Those are just my thighs, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of front squats. <laughs> Hack squats. All, All right, right, buddy. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Well, I want to talk about I want to talk about some things we're afraid of. And by the way, before we get to that, it is Halloween still at Greenlight Studios. So we got my man Nate Collins in here, my former college teammate, and uh, Chris. Chris randomly hit me up and asked me like, "What was my favorite candy?" And he was surprised to hear candy corn. And we share that, which, by the way, can get you canceled on Twitter. <laughs> Candy corn? Yeah, like when you talk about candy corn on Twitter, you would have think I said I punch babies. That's how I feel about peeps. I love peeps. People do that about peeps. Now also. you are all the way fucked up there. I feel like they're in the. Are they not in the same category? Peeps fan. No, and not a candy corn fan. Okay, so you guys are weird. Uh, Nate was a former professional football player, great D lineman, and uh, and also drives uber in his spare time so i have a 4.93 rating we talked about that i have a 4.9 oh that's what i wanted to show you are you a 4.9 yeah driver rating so what oh so i'm a better rider than you are driver um i mean you have that celebrity aspect so it's kind of a cheat code dude it's these kind of a dudes cheat code. don't know who i am we are what it's, our it's, record it's, says we are yeah. we are what our record says we are your record but, is not great i think it's because you talk to the passengers 
Here, this is for you. You'll love this. Look how many trips and look at the compliments I got and look at the number one thing that it says. Dude, you've had 2,320 trips. That is a lot of opportunities for positive reviews, so compliments is not a big deal to me. We're going to have him eating candy corn the entire time. What do you got, two bags of candy corn? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that you guys got the store brand, but it's all good. I well, don't know store what brand store this is, but. Allows you to be a real soldier. Uh, that's about 400 grams of sugar. If you go into diabetic shock, this is like as good as a waiver. Um, Kelly. Nobody, nobody was harmed in the making of this segment. What I really want to talk about, as, as Nate serenades us with the sound of him chomping on wax sugar, yeah. tricolored wax sugar in the background. Kroger brand? I want to talk about our fears yeah. because it is Halloween. Macon, why don't you start it off? Okay. Um... Crippling anxiety. Me too. Can that kill you? Is high atop my list for sure. Mm. It, it's a slower death, but yeah. That's a morbid one to start with. Yeah, okay. Soft bacon. Oh. No shit. If it's not crispy. I like that one. It's scary. Very. Yeah, that scares me too a little bit. You want bit. to jump in here or you want me to go through my Keep entire going. list? Keep rapid fire. Attire not specified on an invitation. Can I get some... I curl up into a fetal position if you don't tell me what to wear to your function. <laughs> to my Any, like anybody, functions? Anybody's function. You pretty much wear khakis and, and sperries everywhere. This is a costume, okay? okay. Uh, the word some assembly required. I'm fearful of that. Well, I don't agree with that either. Inadequate sleep. Big one. Which dovetails with this one. Adjacent hotel room noise. Oh, I fucking hate that. I walk into a hotel room and like I, I drop everything. I am silent and I'm just waiting to hear noise. Yeah. And if I hear noise, my next 24 to 48 is ruined. Are you knocking on their door? I can't do that. Oh, no. confrontation. Another fear. No. I love it lately. Mm. I'm into it lately. That will be on your not fearful Which of we'll get to. list. Uh, teenagers. Fearful. <laughs> and, uh. That's well, that's not our demo. 13 to 19. All of yeah, them. well, like cool teenagers, I guess. Yeah, but most aren't. Right, but the ones that are. Good to be a teenager in like 2001. You sort of look like Mr. Beast, so I would think that would otherwise. And teenagers love him. So you should just tell people you're Mr. Beast. If you, Mr. Who's if, that? If you, if, you, if you see teenagers, you should tell them, yeah, I'm Mr. Beast. Who is that? And they might like you. He's a famous YouTuber. We don't, we don't, we don't follow the trends. We set the trends. I don't give a fuck about Mr. Beast. Yes, I started YouTube. I literally don't thought you were talking about. No, 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 no. Sorry, we'll cut that. We, you, you made it sound like Mr. Beast is a cartel guy. N like if we talk bad about him, he's gonna come and shut our YouTube channel down and. Mm, kill no, us. but he has those those ranges of of ages that he's talking about that. If they're, they're, not the teens. they're not a cartel, but yeah. they can be very annoying, probably. What's your next fear? <laughs> I thought you were talking about Mr. Belding. Uh, uh, I d foxes, I don't want to get into it. Cats, I'd also rather not get into it. And mice. And foxes? That, yeah, foxes. There's yeah. a lot of foxes in Charlottesville. Yeah, I know. I know that. All right, let me ask you a question. Noah's Ark situation. Are you getting on the Ark, or are you just going to try to swim it out? Ark. Even with mice. I got other. I got the cats on there. I'll take care of the mice. But then you got the cats. And, I, and then I got bigger cats, which I'm cool with. Okay. Any other fears? No. Lunches. I hate being entrapped. If somebody asks you to lunch, there's something coming. Yeah. Don't like going to lunch. Don't ask me to lunch. Don't like phone calls. Telephobic. You know this. I'm also a bad texter. Yeah, you and I are currently missing um, a meal with, with just buddies. There can be fellowship meals. Yeah, those are our, our Friday fellowship meal. We're doing a pod. We got to feed the kids. Um, I would also say the open ocean is scary as shit to me. Like, drop me in the open ocean, I'll drown myself. Mm. I'm not even going to try to survive. Yeah. <laughs> what? Not, not going to do it. Why? Sharks. It as soon as it gets nighttime... Forget about, like, I was the kid that wouldn't sweep, swim in the deep end of the pool because there was a shark there. Mm. Perpetually. I still go back to my parents' house, which has a pool, and I jump in, and I think about the 12-foot the great white that's in the deep end. You've always had a great imagination, bro. Lately, it's really good. Um, 
I'm also afraid of uh, snakes. Yeah. Not my favorite. Um, and then getting people's names wrong. Really afraid to pe- say some people's names. Pronunciation or? Both. Okay. Pronunciation, but more so like calling Brenda or Cheryl like a Tiffany. Or yeah. we're calling a, a Jake a John. Someone you've already met before. Yes. I'm afraid of that. Um, but then that's, I'm sure you are a. Hey. Hey, buddy. Guy. Yeah. Hoss. Yeah. Buddy. All that shit. Yeah. And I call some of my friends Hoss and Buddy so that I hedge my, <laughs> you know, my bets. That, like, you see me call people I clearly know their name Buddy so nobody can catch me when I'm doing it to somebody I'm not sure of. Also, uh, deathly afraid of automation and the robot apocalypse. Well Sex documented. robots. Oh, man, I just seen a video today that's really Sex scary. robots video? No, like, like robot training, and they're like beating over the head. They're shooting it with a gun, and then they'll put a person in front of it, and it stops shooting. It's like yeah, we're struggling. gonna hey, <laughs> we're we're gonna cut that because I don't want to be the the people that that the you know Elon Musk comes up and kills first, like Black Mirror style. No, no, this is on Instagram, man. Yeah, but robots watch YouTube. Um, <laughs> generally, I'm afraid of automation taking jobs, mm. truck driver jobs. What would we do without truck drivers who would scare us riding down the highway, um, taking up, you know, the middle lane? Um, yeah, but you also get the honk. You get the honk. And uh, you think they'll let robots do that? Like they'll keep like the fun stuff like that? I will be the fuck off the road if a robot is driving an 18 wheeler. Teslas. Like- I will get a fucking Oregon Trail style wagon. And I will take the back road. You see those? Those are those are tipping over too. You see those? We you? talked about that. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about the things that people think we should be afraid of because there are some things I can puff out my chest on. Me too. I'm going to go with, I mean, spiders is one that I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of spiders at all. See, I am not a tough guy. And for being not a tough guy, being able to deal with spiders is a nice lane for me. Yeah. Like I seem like I have everything together uh-huh. when I can relocate a spider yeah. when asked. That is That is like a big power move for you. Yeah. To make up for the fact that you're probably not going to win too many physical Mortal Kombat. That's right. Can I hit you with a list here? Yeah. Big grates on sidewalks and big cities. I'll walk over those. Is that something people are afraid of? Yeah, people walk around them. I will will jump on those bad boys. Is it it? Bro, you can fall. I told you, like, one of my fears, the fears are just... Falling, falling through the, the floor, floor get eaten by giant rats. It's not even. It's not even that. First off, or the steam coming out that might be Dookie steam. Whatever it is, bro, you just don't know where you're falling to. That's right. Sundays, I haven't had scaries since Sunday like scaries. tenth grade. Not afraid. Oh, I'm afraid of Sundays. Give me Sundays. Howie Long, intimidate some friend of mine. <laughs> not afraid of him. Crawl spaces, cool with crawl spaces. Uh, death. Okay, and to give you a little context, Virginia won the 2019 Men's Basketball National Championship. Yeah. So it's all good now. Good time to bring it up. Yeah. We were there. Yeah. Got some confetti. Yeah. Scooped it's, it. It's all downhill from there. Got drunk with Charles Barkley. What about the football team? Yeah. That was even more important. We on, the great come up, on the come up. How great would that be? That would be awesome. We could die twice. Yeah. Mm. Um, that might be my list, Chris. Inaccuracy, I'm fearful of. Yeah. What about spiders? No, I'm good with spiders. Okay. Well, I brought a friend. Oh, man. Is that a live friend? Yeah, he's alive. No, it's not. The thing about this spider is he's alive, and this is what's called a tarantula. <laughs> okay. You know, like... That's a baby. It's actually it looks way big. bigger in person. No. That's what she it's said. Big. You just have big hands. Um. So this is a tarantula. It's alive. I have a cricket here, which is part of their diet. If you've seen the new Brad Pitt space movie, there were space baboons that came in and killed him. Like, I feel like I'm gonna get killed by a space spider right now. Um, I feel like this spider's gonna crawl right up my... I'm gonna put the spider on my hand. You said you were good with spiders. I am good with spiders. Okay. And this cricket's alive too. I don't wanna lose him. But I think what I'll do is I'll let him sit in my hand. Hmm. And I think I'll, I'll let the spider eat him out of my hand. Is that advisable? I'm fearful of guys not- in the back who actually know shit about the animal kingdom. Is that advisable? 
Fire away. Okay. I'm fearful of not signing waivers before doing stunts on show. podcasts. Damn, he's got some big teeth. Waivers. Who signs waivers? Come on, I gotta. Wow, that thing's moving. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> Huh. Well, just get the I'm cricket off my fucking hand, right? dude. I'm just more, get the cricket off my hand. I'm we'll feed him later. I'm more afraid of the cricket. I'm not afraid of the fucking spider. I'm afraid of the predation. Oh, this is crazy. Come on, big boy. Don't be upset. No, He's been listening. Ah, if he just jumps uh, and just for my hand for this cricket. Yo, why am I holding the cricket? Is he going to fucking bite I'll, me? I'll, what happens if a tarantula bites me? What if this cricket bites me? Just get on my hand, bro. You bro, know bro. what? I'm not afraid of death. Here you go. So let's go. He doesn't look happy. Is it the front of the bed? Why is his ass moving? Or is that the front? He's backing it up. Yeah, I know. Like, you see that, right? <laughs> Nate, take the cricket to my man. Oh, yeah. We should feed him so he's... Oh, oh we should feed him so... Get the, uh, get the cricket. Get the cricket. This is a disaster. <laughs> I, Come on, Megan. Come I'm on. afraid of crickets. I think Come the spider's on. afraid of me, for the record. Yeah. I'm just going to put my hand in here. Ten, ah! nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's ten seconds with my fucking digits in a tarantula lair. Okay. Is that is that proof that I don't care? What? Is it crawl? Huh? Is that proof that I don't care? Can you do ten seconds? My hand in here? Yeah, your entire hand. What's oh, going? No, I think it's up my leg. I didn't. Ah, uh, count please. One Kalamazoo. I got a two clock right here. Kalamazoo. What, that your hand's in there? Yeah. Three Kalamazoo. I think it's spinning a web. Did you Four know? Kalamazoo. Bro. Five Kalamazoo. I'm at I'm at 13 seconds for okay. the record. So, okay, so I win. No, you don't win. I'm going to put it on my fucking hand. I'm not losing to you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we, he'll bite me. Maybe he won't. We lost Ooh, what's cricket. that thing on his butt? Is that a stinger? The cricket's it. Why does he have two stingers? That's what I said. You see that, right? Is yeah. That, is, is that a stinger or? It's probably a stinger. Oh, shit. Mm. Bro. I'm well, not afraid of him. I just respect him. You have gloves on, bro. Yeah. What yeah. What do you mean? You want a glove? No, I take yours off. Come here, buddy. You think buddy. has like spider poop gloves? Like, what is that? You trying to do? get an endorsement? Come on, big boy. He's just not that interested in me. And this happens sometimes when you're handling spiders. <laughs> it's all about respecting the spider. Where's Jack Hanna when you need him? I actually hang out with Jack Hanna in Montana. It's probably scary. That sounds scary like a, Come on. a riddle of sorts. Get on my pink ass hand. What is that? Get on this pink hand. Where the, where the oh, he's going! He can hear me. He jumped. <laughs> Spiders have ears. Come on, big boy. Hop oh. on. Just give me the cricket. Where's the fucking cricket? I Yo, think it's up gone, my bro. pant leg. You think so? <laughs> well. Oh, oh, yep, 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 yep. This is uh, this is the way they behave when up. Oh, he's on my finger. Hey. I hear people in the back. Look, he's just me and him just sizing you up. Yeah, he's just feeling me. He's got two of his legs. They call them <laughs> tentacles. He's got two tentacles on me. For those people listening on Spotify and iTunes, yeah. I'll even look away. What's he doing? Did you guys get... You What's get, he doing right now? Why'd you only get two crickets? I was born with six fingers in actuality, so I'm not worried about this. On one, one of my hands. Which one? Fun fact. Uh, the right hand? <laughs> you don't know which one's your right hand. No, I was a baby. They cut it off right away. Yeah, now you might know it. Okay, come on, age, buddy. Which one is Look, he's right just hand? not interested in me. Let me see this. I win. Yeah, but you have gloves on, bro. What's that mean? You can put him on my hand after he crawls on your hand. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, grab... Yep. Oh, there goes the cricket, right in front of him. Oh, good, right good, there. good, it's good, good. Ground. Yeah. Grab that cricket. Put that fucker on my hand. He just can't go up my spacesuit. That's all. I oh, he's spinning a web. We're seeing it. This is just like in nature. Look, he's outside the thing. Oh, fuck. Come on. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm, not I'm less afraid. afraid. I am less. Let's take a spin. I am the least afraid. Oh. There you go. They're going to call this white boying on the internet. <laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, I was the first. Oh, look, he's got a stinger out. I just care about you. Oh. Uh, oh. Not afraid. Space suit. Not afraid. 
the fuck is he doing with his tentacles? All right, we're good. He doesn't need to spend that much time on me. Yeah, we're I'm good. Not doing bare hand. Just a. <laughs> Whew, what, so we did spiders. What happened to the um, room of brave? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, let's just put him back in his um, his terrarium. Candy oh, corn. Let's name the candy guy. corn, sir. What's the guy's name? Um. Tony Bennett. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, just don't do him like that. Tony Bennett's scary to a lot of people. That pack line, dude. Fair. What do you want to name him? Are you serious? Yeah, is, it, is it me? Or is it... What do you say? Uh, Google says mildly venomous. Well, it's necrotic poison. The, also, my driver explained that to me last night as we were driving down the road. And I, yeah, I'm gonna I was talking to somebody on the phone about this segment, and my driver was like, "There's actually a necrotic poison that you have to watch out for." I said, "Well, mildly venomous. It's not it, a black it, mamba." And am I crazy? I'm good. But like, aren't we taught that spiders have eight legs? I don't. That, Those are teeth, bro. Huh? They're, they're teeth. No, they don't. Thank have you ten for legs. your service, sir. Yo, let's, I didn't eat the. Um... Let's give you a, a cricket. If we can get him a cricket, he's yeah. had to listen to this pod for. Almost an hour now. Um, I also brought something that might fucking just. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, bro. This is about this show is about facing your fears, all right? Now neither of us like snakes, right? Right. I brought a snake. Ah, <sighs> little gardener snake. All right, Kelly, you gotta get him off me in a second, okay? Oh, yeah. What do I do, man? Stop yelling at no. the animals. <laughs> no, 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 get him first, him first. Okay, what, what are, why is it? He I can't don't... stay in the office. I don't- yeah! <laughs> Okay, what, just let's go, let's rock. Oh! oh I bit you! Oh. I'm good, bro. He's fucking, he is I'm good, bro, that guy tried to bite. Okay. I don't blame him. So I win? Hands are up. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fucking good, man. Nope. Bring it back to Petco. Did it bite me? No. You guys are... Yeah. Check him out. Bro, yeah, he's beautiful. In, Can, put in your I really though. appreciate... I I really respect the that species. A lot of respect for that species. I you can see, smell him. You see what I did? Because I wasn't looking. Well, you know. We bonded. It jumped at me. <laughs> What is my heart rate right now? People are diving out of the way. Hold on. One last look? Yeah, one last look. Yeah. Just a last look. Yeah, give him a pet. I'll pet him. Ah! Ah! I hate the way that fucking <laughs> thing feels, man. I love you, though. I he's respect you. You're an animal. He's tense. Yo, you guys are funny. Yeah, he's all coiled up. And that's behavior when you see it in the wild that you got to watch out for. Is that right? Yeah. That's uh... Gotta keep the grass cut. That's exactly right. Good. That's what they always say, right? That was uh... What next? I think we could talk about like sports or something. Uh, <laughs> we'll move on to the next thing. I'd say we, we were... We got a C there. Yeah. We'll do mice next week. Oh. Mice? This was enough. Mice, bro. A little disappointed in myself. I thought I was gonna actually hold the snake. Did you think you were? Think you were? Uh, I think I did. Fuck no, he didn't hold the snake. The snake struck you. That's, yeah. Yeah. We Thank defanged you. the snake. Someone finally We didn't said defang it. the snake. I think PETA would be on our ass. Does PETA do snakes? They have to, right? You don't eat snakes. Well, what? I guess some people Yo, do. Yo, Ibaka just on his on his podcast. Bear Grylls does it on the reg. Tune Durant in for the and Ibaka, Ibaka cooked snake on his show. Check. Like Indiana Jones? Like, you remember Temple of Doom? Where they had that. to cut up, the, open the snake, and then there were other snakes? I, I would think snake tastes like sausage. Like, like, you know, like the Italian sausages for like... I would think snake tastes like if a gator, and I've eaten gator... Salty. ...lived in a <laughs> sewer. First Google result, PETA.org, five reasons never to buy a snake. <laughs> I think they're out of the snake game. Well, technically, we didn't. They are. I mean, Can you show that protection. CNN thing? You got that CNN thing? Um, 
there was a woman recently, and I'm not, listen, if you're a snake person, just go to the zoo. Go to the zoo and come home. Good gravy. 140 snakes? Run me over with a fucking steamroller. I'd rather die that way. Drop me out of a 13,000 foot building. Tall building. Reincarnate me as William Wallace and gut me in front of a bunch of Scottish people. Drop me in the Ace Ventura shark tank and let me get bit in half before I would die from a snake. No chance. Um, where the fuck were we? PETA, snakes, shit I saw. Let's talk about some videos that we pulled up, that we've curated, that are Halloween edition. How about the first one, Mike? You're gonna have something to say about this. Yeah, I already told my old lady if we win, we're, gonna, um, we're going down to Myrtle Beach for about 10 months and we're getting a, a timeshare and the whole nine yards, maybe a, a big boat, a couple boats, some, you know, a lot of boats. And uh, we're gonna have a great time. Yeah, phenomenal performance by you. Thanks. All I want is a writing credit. You did give me credit. The background is the off season of one of those lowly Rams years back here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Really, that's how I look, minus the stash, a lot. And uh, I went to Lucky Seven, yep. which is a fixture here in Charlottesville, to snag, might have been a six pack, something festive. I see they're setting up. Actually, I went for the lotto. In reality, I was trying to win the Powerball. That's right. <laughs> so I go in to buy the Powerball ticket. I see a news crew set up. So naturally, performers and entertainers like us, we want to entertain. Yeah. And I said, you know, I need to go home and get in costume. I need to get in character. I come home. I text you. I alert you. Phone call. And you, uh, you steered me in the right direction into Oops. that character development. Yeah. Were you the name? Did you? No, name was you. Okay. Boats, me. Boats were you. A whole lot of boats. Yeah. Adam Carricker, my roommate in Wisconsin for our first uh, training camp for the St. Louis Rams. Well, the reporter said to you live, what's your name? And, and then, I hadn't thought about right, it. You so the first thing that came out, out of my mouth was Rod Carricker. Yeah. Um, Should have had a name ready. My wife drove me. I don't know why I couldn't drive myself. But I had my wife find my Le I said, babe, find Meg. Shout out to Meg. Find my Levi Garrett hat. I'm going to go shave a mustache. What's going on? I said, we need to go buy a lotto ticket. Wait, just you'll see when you get there. And that little gem was born on a February evening in about 2014. The next, because I love dressing up. And you had them fooled, by the way. I had them fooled. You had, they put Chris Long on a Chiron, That's one of we, your we favorite call Chirons here. words. After it had gotten back to the studio, you had the reporter. Oh, for yeah, it. for sure. The, the reporter was hook, line, and sinker. She thought I was a nice man from uh, maybe Rockbridge County. You know? Yeah. Um, Hell of a performance by you. Great performance. And I, I, let me grab some candy corn here. I also dressed up, though, before. I love dressing up. And when I was in New England, one of my favorite guys to bust balls with was Julian Edelman. Uh, I came with. Julian Edelman to Halloween. Sorry, I got so much candy corn. It's so good. It's so filling. Uh, I got this really high quality mask. 600 bucks. Porcelain. Creepy as fuck. Like, what's the movie where the, the laws don't exist anymore? The Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the Purge? The Purge! <laughs> I look like one of those Purge people. I came to work. I actually freaked a lot of my teammates out. Do you have that... Uh, that medium. Um, that's why it gets me the rock when it matters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you feel like you're playing bigger this year? <laughs> yeah, you know, I lifted a lot. You know, I spent my last season in Muscle Beach. I did a lot of sit-ups in the park. And you can see it when I'm blocking. You know, I move people. I do everything. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> so, Jules took that well. That was his locker. That was his Kent State shirt. Um... Everybody loved that that costume. Bill even loved it. Bill laughed his ass off. I actually got Bill to smile and laugh. Uh, and then I busted it out again for the Super Bowl. And this was on the bus. We were already drunk. It was 9 a.m. in Foxborough. Me and Devin McCourty. Shout out to Dev. Roll that tape. 
What's up, Bubs? Hey, bro. Hey, Dang, Bubs. that catch you had, though, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm the new David Tyree, That was game-saving, bro. Yeah, sports science said You're I... so I, elite, I, man. Sports science said I clutch the ball as fast as an eagle flaps his wings, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I'm elite. I'm elite, bro. Oh, elite. Tom well, Brady's nothing without you, bro. He's nothing without me, bubs. He needs me. That's why I'm gonna be on on Duck Boat One on the parade, bubs. Come find me. And I got a pump up shop on my duck boat. So yeah, that was me as uh, Jules for the parade. I got just shit canned that day. That's right. Beautiful day in Foxborough. A great parade. They know how to do it. They have a lot of practice. Narrow streets. Freezing rain, mm. and the best thing about a Super Bowl is the parade. I'm just telling you, like, and getting drunk in the cold is great, anyways. But doing that with like a million plus people cheering you on, your ego is full. What parade was better? Philly, because they waited. Okay. But Boston knew how to put one on. Like, so for me, like they've Boston, this, they've done this before. Yeah. I loved it. It was my first one. I wore the mask. I did the the Rolls Royce emblem pose on the front of a duck boat. <laughs> They apprehended me. They said, you got to... Bobblehead yeah, 1A that's right from here. Philly. Um, and I dropped the mask. It's out there in Boston somewhere. Somebody has it, please. If you if you have the mask, I'll put out a nominal, a nominal award. No, you don't want to go nominal. What's the you, word there? A big old reward. A big ass award. Yeah. Um, reward. There's also a lot so, of people because of that bobblehead that you mentioned. Back? Huh? Why would you give a big reward to get the mask back? And well, not that? bigger than the value of the mask. So I don't okay, want anybody... Okay, then yes, okay. nominal. Yeah, nominal. Okay. Maybe like... I don't think you're going to see the mask. Maybe again. a Spirit <laughs> Airlines ticket to Charlottesville. Yeah. We take you out to one of our more budget wine country att attractions. Yeah. Um, because there are some good ones here that are pricey. If I had this mask, I would not be giving it back. Just, to, just saying. Just sell it on eBay. Anyways, that little get up there has has done pretty well for me um i ordered it last minute from a costume shop in philly after we won the super bowl didn't want to curse our super bowl chances by ordering a, a fur coat beforehand um i was thinking game of thrones and then ai name drop bad news virginia friend of marcus hagan's friend the of the chuck. program the answer sent me a jersey right in time hit the streets for an epic parade and people have been dressing up as me, adults, women, children. I got this text yesterday from some of my buddies in Philly. I was supposed to remember the kid's name. I do not remember the kid's name, but I love this kid. Oh. That's commitment. <laughs> and that's what I looked like when I finished the parade. This is the first person that actually did the costume right because <laughs> that legit. baby is sort of immobile. Yeah. Milk drunk. Baby doesn't know what's going on. Uh, that's how I was after the parade. Shout out to the Philly police who gave me a ride home uh, in the back of the car. Usually I don't want to be in the back of a police car, but they were gracious enough to bring me home. That was a beautiful day um, in Philly. And talking chalk media, as you see this beautiful woodwork behind me, um, is how we're going to close out most of our shows. We're going to talk about my new show, Fishbowl. Have you enjoyed it so far? Hell yeah. Have you even watched? Yes. Less decisive. Um, I have. Okay. I loved it. You okay, had, good. That's, go. that, feel, like that feels good. We have AD. We had Primo. This week we have Kirstie Ennis, a warrior, lost her leg serving our country, first woman above the knee amputee to summit Kilimanjaro, a 19,340 foot mountain on our Conquering Kili um, campaign. And she was awesome to work with. Had her sit down with me for the fishbowl. Uh, we went from Nauzad straight to Camp Bastion, which is a British air base out in Afghanistan. And I was there very briefly. I had two doctors pass me up. They looked at me and said, there's not a chance, and they kept walking. Not a chance you're going to make it. Yeah. They decided that my head trauma, uh, they just didn't think that. Did yeah. they explain to you what happened up um, here, you know, with your brain movement? Were they able to give you some prognosis on that like relatively quickly or no. was there downtime? No, it, it, it was more like, so I have actually, I'm actually good friends with one of them now. Um, yeah. and it took a lot for him to walk up to me and say, I'm sorry, basically. Um, but he just looked at me and was like, okay, I have these other people here. I can treat a blown up leg. You know, I can cauterize that and clean it up and, but I can't 
treat what she has going on. Um, and I had set fractures in my t C2, C3, and C4, so they couldn't like turn my head to do a bunch of stuff with. And these are makeshift hospitals, you know, they're yeah. tents in the middle of Afghanistan. But I got really lucky. There was a British um, plastic surgeon that was actually volunteering her time out there. Wow. And she then came up and was like, looked at everybody and was like, you know what? You can sew up everything else, but don't touch her face. <laughs> like yeah. I'm fixing that. Yeah. Um, she did a nice job. Thank you. I mean, if a Corman did it, it would definitely be. If like, a Corman, as much as you love Corman, it's just <laughs> yeah. like that's just not that's no, not it's their not thing. No. Um, was there a moment when they're passing you up that you're like, "Am I going to die?" I mean, is this it or? Well, I honestly thought I was going to die because, like, going through my head in the whole helicopter ride back over, I just thought like I'm not dying without seeing my little sister. So I can't wait for you to see that. Um, Please watch the interview, like, subscribe. Uh, Kirsty really opened up, and she always impresses me because she's not just a badass. She's a really tender person as well. She's great with kids. She always has an intentional message or a cause when she climbs these mountains. She's done Aconcagua. She tried Everest. She talks about that. But her recovery was just amazing, and her perspective is always amazing. Whenever I'm having a bad day, I think about Kirsty, and she made the point that whenever she's having a bad day, she thinks about somebody who's overcoming a bigger challenge than her. And that is pretty beautiful perspective. She's wonderful. Pat Tillman Award winner. Check out the interview and join us again on Tuesday if we don't get fired for Greenlight. Have a good weekend. and Shout out Alan Ruck. And take care, y'all. Y'all take care. All right, so it's a hard day's work in the books. What did I fuck up, Meg? Well, you brought about a half dozen people into this room and you said that this particular spider was not venomous. Turns out <laughs> mildly venomous. Well, necrotic flesh-eating capabilities are not venomous. Spiders can hear, by the way, but don't have ears, as you alleged. Mm. Arachnids hear through hairs on their legs. Mm. So you got a good feel for things. Nice. And last but not least, NASA headquarters technically in Washington, D.C. Mm. So not Cape Canaveral? That's right. I always thought it was the headquarters. And I think That's they have a setup in, in Houston as well, as you'll remember from the open. Oh, from Apollo 12. You trying to con me? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for today's fact check. Thank you. I didn't fuck up too much. Day after Halloween, not bad. See you all next week. <laughs>